In this problem, we're being asked to solve a polynomial inequality. So we've got this polynomial here. It's already been factored for us, which is kind of nice. And it's set greater than or equal to 0. So basically, we want to find all the, the regions, the intervals, where this function is uh, greater than or equal to 0, where it's not a negative number. If you want to think about that visually, you know, you've got some complicated polynomial function. It might be zooming all around on the uh, around the x-axis here. In some places it's above the x-axis and some places it's below. We want greater than or equal to zero. So all of this area where it's positive or, or zero, all of this area, and then all of this area continuing on. So these regions, this region and then this region, that's going to be your solution, those two intervals put together. So how do we do this? Well, luckily for us, the zeros of the function tell us lots of information. Those are places where the function uh, either crosses the x-axis or maybe it touches it and moves on. But what the zeros do is they divide the function into these regions. And if we just test these regions and know whether the function is positive or negative, we can know whether the function's above or below that x-axis. So that's what we're going to do here. And we can get the zeros of the function from these factors pretty easily. We would set each of these equal to 0 and then solve them. x minus 4 equal to 0. I solve that for x, I get a positive 4. So that's my 0. If this is the factor, that's my 0. Likewise, this would be a negative 1. This would be a positive 6 twice, actually. This would have a multiplicity of 2 because this is squared. But that doesn't really matter. All that means is that um, the function touches the x-axis there um, without crossing it. So once you've got your zeros, what you should do is just set up an x-axis here and put those numbers on there. I've got negative 1, I've got 4, and I've got 6. What they do is they divide this x-axis into these four regions. And in each of these regions, the function's always going to be either above or below. So if we test any point, in each of these regions, we're going to and see if the, po the value of the function is positive or negative, we'll know. So let's go ahead and try that. Um, so this region right here is really from negative infinity up to negative 1. So I'm just going to try putting negative 2 in there. If I put negative 2 in for x, let's see, that'd be a negative 6 times uh, a negative 1 times, um, well, negative 2 minus 6 is, is 8, but we'd square that. So that'd be a positive 64. And I've got one, two negative signs in these three things that I'm multiplying. Negative times negative is a positive. So the function is above the x-axis in this region. Let's try a point in here. I'm going to choose 0 because that's always an easy number to put in. That would give me negative 4 times 1 times, well, this would be 6 squared times 36. That would leave me just one negative sign. So this answer is going to be negative. I don't even have to calculate what the number is. I just need to know whether it's positive or negative. This one's going to be negative. So this region is below. And let's look at 4 to 6. We'll put 5 in there. So 5 minus 4 is 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. And then that last piece is going to be squared. So whatever it is, it's all positive. So this is going to be above. And then let's put in a 7. 7 minus 4 is 3. 7 plus 1 is 8. Those are both positive. And the last one's going to be squared, so that's going to be positive. So this must be positive as well. Once we have this information, we can write our, our intervals. So we want greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to start at negative infinity and go up to and include negative 1. The reason we include that is because we have greater than or equal to 0, and negative 1 is where it crosses, so that's where it actually is 0. So we're going to include that with the square bracket. And then we want this section. It's all positive here. So we start at and include 4 for the same reason, and we go up to infinity. So that is how to solve a polynomial inequality.